This video was brought to you by us, Slidebean. Make beautiful slide presentations in no time. Get one free month by signing up at slidebean.com slash YouTube. This episode starts with a basic problem. People love going to the movies, but it's very expensive. And in order to solve this, one company wanted to disrupt the entire market. MoviePass tried to change the movie-going experience altogether with a simple idea. For a monthly subscription fee, subscribers could go to the movies once a day, every day. Cheap movies every day of the month sounds pretty great. But ironically, too many subscribers would eventually be a bad thing. MoviePass went from being a hit to entirely collapsing in just three days. So this is Startup Forensics MoviePass. Today we're going to look into the origins of MoviePass, the first tumbles, MoviePass versus AMC, friends and foes, internal chaos, and finally, the fall. The origins of MoviePass. Our protagonist is Stacy Spikes, a tech and film entrepreneur from California, who was convinced that a subscription movie-going service could work. For a flat fee, viewers could go to the movies as many times as they wanted, in theory at least. And he had this idea way back, that's in 2005. He just couldn't get anybody to buy into it. Big movie companies like AMC, Regal, and Cinemark were focused on IMAX and 3D and not really on the subscription market. So for six years, he unsuccessfully tried to sell the idea of MoviePass until in 2011, he met Hamid Watt, who helped raise $1 million to really start the company. The money came from two investors, True Ventures and AOL. AOL, you can wonder if it was a sign of things to come. Anyway, initially MoviePass was $50 a month for a movie every day. So if you went to the movies once a week, each movie would cost $12.50. If you went to the movies twice a week, each movie would cost six bucks. That's actually a pretty good deal. So the online system allowed users to pick a movie and a seat, then print a voucher to claim the tickets at the counter. And it was only available in 21 theaters in San Francisco, but people loved it. The day the company launched, 19,000 users tried to subscribe and the server crashed. That looks like the first part of a very successful story, but you've seen this show before. The first tumbles. From the start, things went wrong. First, no one in MoviePass told those 21 cinemas about the test, so the tickets were blocked. Also, there was a major conflict of interest. MoviePass was using a database from the website movietickets.com, but AMC, one of the biggest cinema chains in the US, owned part of movie tickets and they weren't happy. In fact, they quickly threatened to shut down MoviePass. So they now had to rethink everything, but other tests weren't working, mainly because they were cumbersome and required printing. And we all know that printers are evil beings and who owns a printer anymore? So let's be clear, MoviePass was a good idea. They had mapped out all the movie theaters in the US so they could pinpoint any theater they wanted and had taken into consideration populational income to create regional plans. All of this with a team of five people. It just lacked one detail. Spikes and Watt wanted real-time digital transactions and the only way you could do that was with a card. So they first joined forces with Discover Card. It worked well enough to gain more attention, so much so that eventually MasterCard itself got into the action. So now they hit it big. The MoviePass card was accepted everywhere MasterCard was. And they started including different plans from $19.99 to 50 bucks and even had regional fees so it catered to more users. All you had to do was sign up, pay, and your MoviePass would show up in your mailbox. Subscriptions grew and Spikes was very confident. No one can stop us now. The theaters can't stop us. We'll have access to all theaters and all movies. Yeah, so about that. Theaters can't stop you, and they did. MoviePass versus AMC. Before that happened, things went well for MoviePass. Companies like Lambert Media and Moxie Pictures invested millions, and in October 2017, the stock was valued at $39 per share. Remember this. There was still one big hurdle, and that was AMC. Not only AMC, but the movie theater industry in general. From the start, the relationship wasn't easy. AMC constantly fought against MoviePass, even releasing statements that clarified that it had no association with the company. Why? Well, 
two sides to the story. AMC and other theater chains claimed MoviePass wasn't sustainable and that it affected them directly. Let's see why. MoviePass used something called breakage. Businesses like gyms use breakage all the time. They benefit from people who sign up and rarely use. Those guys make up for the users that go to the gym every day. But people hate the gym and they love movies. If they find a cheaper way to go to the movies, they'll use it. And MoviePass was very, very cheap. The lowest fee at that time was $14.95 per month, the cost of just one regular ticket in the US. So besides AMC's argument, perhaps there was something else. After all, MoviePass wanted to be disruptive. What if in the future, MoviePass could become so big that they would dictate ticket prices for the theaters. This idea truly scared cinemas. Companies like AMC weren't against the subscription model, they were against MoviePass specifically. So why would they join forces? Friends and foes. The numbers were too enticing. MoviePass boasted having 30,000 subscribers and 100% lift per user per month. And that wasn't the best part. They had an ace up their sleeve, data. Through their system, MoviePass had direct access to consumers' tendencies and tastes, a key element in boosting sales, and theaters, of course, wanted this. So the trade seemed simple. Cinemas paid MoviePass for data, and in turn, MoviePass paid full fare for the tickets, which they sold at a discount to massive amounts of subscribers. And so, a one-year pilot program began in 2014. But at the end of this pilot, something weird happened. An independent report showed that things weren't that promising. Before MoviePass, the average use was 1.5 times per month, and after MoviePass, it increased to just three times per month initially. The report stated, the first month shows a spike in visits as expected for early utilization of a subscription, with later months regressing to average usage above pre-MoviePass activity. Besides, MoviePass data seemed off, inaccurate and poorly analyzed. In fact, some of the data in the program was completely missing. Let's add Spike's defense here. He said his data was exactly what he promised and there was still interest from AMC until there was some personnel change inside. Whatever happened, AMC didn't like it and in 2016, they pulled out of the deal. This was of course a big hit for a company that was already struggling internally. Internal chaos. With AMC out of the race, the other companies, Cinemark and Regal, didn't want to join and MoviePass was left on its own. So they hired Mitch Lowe, a former Netflix executive, to rake in any money he could find. But the outlook was already bleak. We were going out of business, said Lowe. The company that once tried to shake the world was now on live support, but they were still attractive because of that thing they had, the data. And this was enough to motivate one investor. In 2017, Helios and Matheson Analytics, HMNY, offered $25 million for 51% of the company, with a catch. HMNY wanted to expand aggressively. They drove the price down to just $10 so that they could reach 100,000 subscribers and go public. Hear that again, that's $10 a month for unlimited movies. Clearly, some people inside of MoviePass disagreed. Stacy Spikes himself believed that such a low price would only work as a promotion and that it should have ended quicker than it did. But this $10 idea was working too well. In three days, the company had 150,000 new subscribers, and by December 2017, they had 1 million and rising. To celebrate, Mitch Lowe and HMNY CEO Ted Farnsworth posed in front of an AMC seminar, each holding a movie pass and a big, huge smile on their faces. At the time, of course, it seemed totally right to celebrate. Now, not so much. Here's what Lowe said about that picture. I probably could have avoided holding up the MoviePass card under the AMC sign. Because soon after, things took a turn for the worse. And fast. The fall. Many, many things went wrong for MoviePass. They certainly grew fast, but they couldn't fulfill the demand. So they had hundreds of thousands of new users every month, but MasterCard could only ship 35,000 to 50,000 cards a week. This meant that some users, even if they had already paid, didn't get their movie pass until months later. Then the system constantly collapsed. Some screenings just disappeared from the app and others were blocked or there seemed to be no seats available when in fact, the theater was empty. Even Spikes, the co-founder, wasn't safe. He was fired in January, 2018. He was fired over email with an email that just said, 
your services are no longer required. By the way, he now rents an office in WeWork. But anyway, it doesn't stop there for MoviePass. Users realized that they could trick the system. Family members shared cards and rewards points to get free screenings. Yet Lowe insisted only 12 to 20% of the users were committing any type of fraud. Well, if you have 3 million users, that's 600,000 users committing fraud. I would be worried. And investors and partners like MasterCard did worry. It was evident that things were bad and the company took actions that just seemed wrong. For example, they changed the model from a movie a day to just four movies per month. They also limited big premieres so that they wouldn't lose a lot of money. But users didn't know this until they tried to buy tickets and realized a specific movie was blocked, which was of course not cool. Blockbusters like Avengers couldn't be watched more than once, and there was no IMAX or 3D available. Also, they implemented dynamic fares for some movies, kind of like Uber. Still, subscriptions were at just $10, so they lost $104 million in just three months, mostly from paying or subsidizing these tickets. Forget breakage, MoviePass was dying. And then came The weekend. Not that guy. On July 27th, 2018, with the premiere of Mission Impossible Fallout, MoviePass urged users to experience hashtag Mission Impossible. But MoviePass didn't inform anybody that Mission Impossible was blocked. No one could see it. No one. So right there and then, MasterCard pulled the plug and blocked all of the MoviePass cards. So live support was gone. Coincidentally, word got out that HMNY borrowed $5 million to make certain required payments. Subscribers, of course, wanted out, but they couldn't even unsubscribe. Everything on the website crashed, so they took it to Twitter. Just look out for hashtag MoviePassFail. In a matter of hours, HMNY's stock fell to zero. Nothing. Then they were kicked out of NASDAQ. Even the New York Attorney General got in on it as MoviePass was under investigation for misleading investors. And by Monday, MoviePass disappeared. The website only had a statement saying goodbye or something. MoviePass's demise, of course, left us a big, nice lesson. Sure, they wanted to disrupt moviegoing, and a subscription service isn't far-fetched. In fact, AMC launched its own version with relative stability. But greed blinded MoviePass. They didn't see that they had disrupted a very small ecosystem in which all the actors need to be in sync. And until that changes, outsiders need to be on good terms. MoviePass wasn't on good terms from the get-go. And after all, MoviePass needed them more than they needed MoviePass. Now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We have new videos coming up every week. See you next week.